Hello everyone. Welcome to the session on Applied Intellectual Property. Uh, I'm here to present a session on Applied Intellectual Property uh, from Kurana and Kurana Advocates and IP Attorneys and IIPRD. My name is Deep Shikha. I'm working as Patent Associate at Kurana and Kurana and taking care of largely the patent prosecution and patent drafting the fields of uh, IT, CS, mechanical, energy sector, electronics, telecommunication, electrical, etc., etc. So we are here to discuss few things on the topic that how intellectual property is being implemented, applied to the different sectors, what all different protections are available and how a person need to decide that which intellectual property he need to take care of or he need to get his invention or his intellectual idea under which umbrella of the IPR. So uh, for this, we have a presentation initially and later on we'll take a session, a questionnaire session in which I will try to answer as many questions as possible. And later on, you can even text me out your questions on the provided email ID in the description section. So let's start with the presentation. So here we have the presentation regarding applied intellectual property. So uh, applied intellectual property, that is the property, the that is your intellectual property. So intellectual property means is, it is a basically a category of property that includes your intangible creations of your human intellect. intellect remember it, it is particularly intellectual creation of your mind or of a human intellect. And this is basically intangible because it is intangible because it is not same as the property you have, you can guard it or you can lock it down in your lockers, but it is apart from it, you have to disclose it. And in order to stop others from misusing your invention or you need to protect it in the way that the others will not take the advantage of it and go ahead and become your competitor or degrade your quality or your value. So for that purpose, you need to protect your intellectual property. So what is the need? Basically, what we are going to discuss in this section is basically the introduction and significance of IPR, the different IP protections available when to choose which one and we will of course study some of the case studies so here we see is why was there a need for intellectual property rights what do you think why we need intellectual property we all know this is a creation of the king shahjan the taj Mahal, the famous seventh wonder of the world so at that time there was no intellectual property protection what he did, he collect all the artisans from around the world, make them work out on his invention, on his creation, basically, to build such a marvelous monument. Now, in order to protect it, as there was no intellectual property, he cut out the hands of all the great artisans so that they can't build another same marvelous monument. So this was the way the King Shah Jahan tried to protect his intellectual property. I hope there would have been the intellectual property right or the protection. So the great artisans would have preserved their hands. Next, the reason to protect intellectual property. Why we need to protect our intellectual property is because we want others not to copy it and we want to uh, stop others from copying it and enhance the market value of our business or idea converting the ideas to the profit making assets enhance the competitiveness of the market and of course enhance the opportunities for business next let's see that how we want to create an intellectual property so what we need to do basically 
we need to first search out the problem existing problem in the art regarding which we are going to work on it and work out and get the solution so the very best first thing we need to do is we need to find the existing problem or we need to think out that what is it on which we need to have some improvement so first thing is we need to search out the problem then we need to frame out the idea that how this problem we need to resolve it out then based on our idea we need to do some experimentation some analysis we need to work out for several years or we need to invest such time so that we can uh, give a output or a result or a solution of what the problem was so finally when we have we uh, got the problem and the related solution we need to protect it so we protect such pro solutions under the umbrella of ipr that is intellectual property rights so if once we protect our protections and our solutions under the ipr umbrella the advantages we get are these that is fosters innovative spirit provide competitive edge brings r and d effort reduces the gap between the lab and the market brings the r and d efforts to, to reality it of course benefits the scientists and of course involves the top people to strategize that how to launch what to launch when to launch and how to protect their r and d things next there are different sectors in which we can protect our creations or our ideas or our concepts or our intellect basically so the these different domains have been protected by different acts these different acts are like your technical inventions are being protected in the form of patents which is covered under the patent act 1970 then the trademarks under the trademark act 99 copyrights under the copyright act 1957 designs under the design act 2000 geographical indications under the geographical indications of goods act 1999 protection for plant varieties and farmers rights under the act uh, this act uh, of 2001 then semiconductor integrated circuits and the layout designs these are protected under semiconductor integrated circuit layout designs act 2000 so let's start with the first thing that is patent what do you understand the patent is and what is being protected under a patent so a patent is a form of right granted by the government okay this is been granted by the government to a person or the inventor or the owner this right is exclusive right which exclude others so the inventor can exclude others from making using selling offering to sell or import his invention or his idea or the creation his creation for a limited period of time for example in case of patent it is for 20 years a protection is 20 years from the date of filing and this is like a negative right because it gives a monopoly to an inventor over the market so what are the basic necessities to get a patent the three basic very basic necessities is your invention your technical inventions should have number one novelty number two inventive step number three industrial applicability so what do you understand by novelty novelty means new it should not be existing in the art your solution should not be there in the art or should not be used in the form of some product or the process or it should not be known in the like it should not be a traditional knowledge like this so it should be new in the art it should be novel second is industry inventive step so by inventive step we need to understand that inventive step is something that a person skilled in the area should not be able to get on to your solution directly so if you have n number of articles for example you have 1 2 and 3 three different documents and you are saying that this is my invention which is the creation of all three documents so it should not be like a person skilled in the art a person from the same technology 
should read all the three documents and should arrive at your solution. So it should not be that obvious. So this is inventive step. Next is industrial applicability. So of course, if you have a patent over something, you need to implement it. You need to apply it. So it should have some industrial applicability because it's of no use that you have an invention, you patented it and you are not using it because after you, once you get the patent, you have to show to government that every year you need to show that what work you have done on this invention. So once you get the patent, it is for 20 years, but from the date of filing, remember this, this is from the date of filing. Apart from this, once your invention or your technical uh, creation has novelty, inventive step and industrial applicability, there are two sections in the Patent Act 1970 that you need to take care of. That is section three and section four. So what these sections says is, if your invention falls under any of these sections, that is section, either section three or section four, then it is non-patentable because anything which is given a patent it should be in favor of human thing human beings it should be for enhancing or it should be the motive is to enhance things to give the benefit to public it should not be like it should restrict something it should not be like restricting something or it should not be morality for example there are different sections which in from section 3a to section 3p they are defining that what all things are non-patentable for example it should not be frivolous or misleading invention it should not be contrary to public order or morality it should not be like something already existing in the art and you are just merely discovering it and presenting it so it will not be given any patent or mere a different form of a substance, a known substance, which was in the form of a solid. Now you, now you are presenting the thing in a form of a liquid or a gas without enhancing the efficacy. So it will not be given any patent. Or maybe the substance which is just an admixture of two things or number of things or a mere arrangement or rearrangement. Moreover, the things like methods of agriculture or horticultures are not patentable beyond that that any treatments, medical uh, medicines, these are non-patentable plants and animal varieties are not, they are not given the patents and your mathematical formula or the business method or the computer programs, algorithms are not given patents, literary or dramatic work, artistic work are not given any patents protection. Then there is, if there is some gaming or some mental act, that is not given a patent, then a way of presentation or the method of presentation, free of integrated circuits, or maybe the traditional knowledge. For example, we had turmeric. US patented the turmeric. And you know, in India, the turmeric has been used since so long. Everyone knows it. And the it's a traditional knowledge. We know it very well. So India opposed the turmeric patent of the US. So such things which are traditionally been known and used and tradition, people have the traditional knowledge over it, they are not given the patent. Of course, the section four says, for the favor of the country, the things like inventions which are related to atomic energy, they are non-patentable. Next, see, what are the procedures to get a grant of a patent, grant over your invention? So you have an invention, you need to draft it. After drafting, you need to file it. After filing, you can file it in the way of provisional or the complete specification. If it's a provisional, you get a 12 months of time period to make file a complete application. Then after 18 months from the date of filing, your application is published. So it comes to the public domain. Once it is in the public domain, it is open for the pre-grant opposition. Then you have to file the request for examination. It is being examined. FER is generated. If the response is quite fine to FER, then you may or may not get the subsequent examination report, SCR, or you may land up to hearing. Once it is decided, it may the case may be either abandoned or may get a grant. So after a grant, the post-grant opposition is open. And if a person is not satisfied, he can go to 
IPAB and file an appeal and then revoke or amend or can continue with it. Let's move on to our next topic that is trademark. Okay, so what is your basic idea about the trademark? Trademarks. So trademarks are anything, any recognizable sign or recognizable name or recognizable expression. So trademark is basically a mark that identifies your goods or the services from others. Whatever you can see here, these are all the trademarks. For example, once you just you look at the symbol and you get, oh, this is the symbol of Apple. So it is representing Apple. So you that very moment you come across, you have the image in your mind and you have that idea that whose goods or services are these. So that kind of thing, that kind of picture a trademark produces. So a trademark is basically a recognizable sign of the design or the expression which distinguishes your products or your services of a particular trader or of, from the similar product or trader. Okay. So trademark is valid for 10 years initially and this can be renewed subject to the fees there are different things different kinds of trademarks you can get but some non conventional trademarks which i would be disclosing here are like uh, the color marks which are like for example the cadbury dairy milk it's a, it has a very specific color that purple shade that is a color mark registered for cadbury then you have the Yahoo Yoodle or the Lion's Road or MGM. They are the sound marks, registered sound marks. Then you have the some smell marks as well. Beyond that, there are there's a topic called trade dresses, we, which would be discussing later on. So these are some of the trademarks. The American Express added as the way Yahoo is written, the way Coca-Cola is written from the symbol M, U, yellow M. You very well you can make it oh it's mac d of course the way pepsi ball is there and what else of the trademarks so basically now we have the slide regarding the process for registration of a trademark again in the registration of trademark you need to file one application this that application undergoes exam Examination. In examination, there are some objections which you need to respond. If those objections are overruled, yeah, your response is fulfilling the objections. It, they are satisfying the objections. So it is directly published in a journal. But if not, there is, of course, a showcase hearing you can go for. Now, once it is published in the journal, you will get four months of time. So anyone who claims that, oh, this is my trademark or this is already a registered trademark, he can oppose your trademark. And then opposition proceedings starts. So uh, in case of opposition proceedings, there's evidence and then hearing and then either a registration or the refusal of the trademark is there. Next, let's start with copyright. Okay. So what copyright says is, copyright gives the creator, copyright is being given to a creator of an original work. So this is one exclusive right and which is given to the creator. And let me tell you that this is the longest protection IP is protecting, IP is providing to one of the domain. So the protection is for like entire life of the author plus 60 years after the death of the author. So this is one of the longest protection the IP is providing. That is the entire life of the author plus the 60 years after the life of the author. So if you have some expression which is in the tangible form, so the author gets this protection for his articles. It is not compulsory to register it. But of course, if you register it, this serves as an evidence to the court. So uh, these are some of the examples of the copyrights. Like uh, under the copyrights, you have literary work, you have dramatic work, musical work, artistic work, your sound recordings, cinematographic films, photographs, computer programs, performances, etc., etc., etc. Let's talk about designs, design protection. Okay, don't get confused with 
copyright or trademark anyways that we would be disclosing in the cases we are going to discuss later on so design protection what is this protection so design is basically the product look appealing and as such it increases the commercial value so what is it for because it is the the thing which is appealing to your eye because it is being just solely by your eye so something which is appealing to your eyes is and it is being solely judged by your eye that increases the commercial value of your good is given a design protection so the design protection is only the feature of either shape or the configuration or the pattern ornament or composition of lines or colors apply to any article whether it is two dimensional or three dimensional or in both forms okay either two or three dimensional or in both the forms by any industrial process or means for example you can have a manual thing you can have a mechanical thing you can have a chemical thing that may be separated or combined and which is finished article so anything which is appealing which is in these forms for example new shape or configuration or surface pattern or ornaments or composition of lines and colors that has been given a design protection of course it need to be novel and the design protection is for 10 years and can be only once renewed for further 5 years okay so this is for 10 years and can be once and only once renewed for further 5 years what is the process for filing or registering your application under design so uh, first thing you need to do is you need to file an application then you need you will get an examination report you need to file a reply to the examination report now if your reply is accepted it will directly get published if your reply is not accepted then there is a showcase hearing then it may call for any amendment or if it is satisfied it can go like that if it is not satisfied it is abandoned but if it is satisfied and your reply is being accepted it is published and after publication you get a design it is granted and you get a design certificate if it is not opposed okay so the design is basically a protection for 10 years further added to 5 years if required next protection we are going to talk about is gi that is geographical indications okay what do you understand by geographical indication this is bit different from what the things we have read till now so the geographical indication is an indication which identifies such goods what kind of goods it protects is like agricultural goods or the natural goods or manufactured goods or originating or manufactured in the territory of either a country or a region or a locality in that ter territory so what it adds to it because of the region or the culture or the country or the locality is that it gives a particular kind of quality to it or a reputation or maybe some other characteristics that is being added to that particular product okay so for example there are many cases there are basmati rice which have geographical indications are like basmati rice or the mysore silk sarees they are quite famous and these things are famous all around the world the darjeeling tree which got a very first geographical indication registration in india then there are n number of other things as well so this is not there's no compulsion to register it but in order if you register it you get the assurance that you will you can oppose others from degrading your quality and from this to get some distinctiveness you should get this geographical indication registration this registration is though valid for 10 years i want to also discuss some of the characteristics like uh, you will think that what the geographical indication will provide to you so the things that geographical indication or the registration under the gi will give you are number 1 it will give you the legal protection 
okay so if it is registered you have that legal protection you are under the ipr umbrella secondly it prevents unauthorized users i will give you one example for this as well so unauthorized uh, users are they can't come and claim and sell their product by saying oh it is the same thing which is like they can't any person or the farmer from any other region can't come and claim it is a basmati rice okay and pack it and sell it if you have that gi protection then if you have the gi protection it in this protection will in turn boost your export and it will promote economic prosperity of producers of goods produced in that geographical territory let me give you you the example of darjeeling tea what is the case is with darjeeling tea is this is a very recent case the darjeeling tea has geographic indication registration okay so uh, this is famous all around the world people are really fond of darjeeling tea and by name it is sold so uh, what the other tea producers what they were doing were ki they were just taking the 51% of the darjeeling tea mixing it with some other tea so what it will do it will degrade the quality of that darjeeling tea and they started selling it out in the market by the name of darjeeling tea so okay buyers were buying those things and somehow the quality inventiveness you have was degraded and is not actually of what the actual darjeeling tea was so because it was a registered thing registered gi we had the people the actual darjeeling producers they are able to oppose it and throw the such people out of the market cause boss this is the gi protection we have and you can't sell your product by the name of darjeeling tea and can't degrade us so this is the kind of thing the power you have once you have the registration next let's come on to semiconductor integrated circuits layout design act 2000 so by the name semiconductor integrated circuit layout design act 2000 it is very clear that it is related this protection is related to your semiconductor integrated circuits or the layout designs so what the area for which this protection is for bit circuits layout designing so the layout can be the layout of a transistor or the layout of circuitry elements or the lead wires attached to such elements now this protection is basically for 10 years from the date of filing or commercial use whichever so either you have filed it or you have commercialized it so whatever is the case you will get the protection from that date to further 10 years so now there can be a question that will what is the significance of semiconductor integrated circuit layout design act and the design separation to the existing design act my dear the reason being in the design act what the design act says what the design protection is for any new original and ornamental design so it is for new original and ornamental design only of an article of the manufacturer that does not affect the article's functionality so the basic thing is design will not protect not affect the functionality of the article for example you have a 1 liter bottle it can be cylindrical it can have n number of curves over it but it will contain 1 liter of water right but in case of semiconductor act if you apply the same thing because in case of bottle it will not affect the functionality it is not that a bottle with n number of curves will contain 900 ml of water and the bottle bottle which is cylindrical will contain 1 liter of water no 1 liter means 1 liter so the design will not affect the functionality but this is not the case with semiconductors there is a clear cut distinguish thing that if the transistor and the wires and the ultimate input to output the wire is long enough then there would be a delay or there are n number of things the processing time affects the delay increases 
And if you comparatively shorter it down, the output is specifically, specifically the output based on the design is specifically affected. So this is the reason that it need to have a different kind of protection, which is given by Semiconductor Integrated Circuit Layout Design Act. OK, so where the functionality is involved, for example, you remember the whole hall size computer system and now you have things in your mobile. So the whole the system, which is of a hall size that must have a PCB of like a big dining table kind of PCB. So if you have transistor layout circuits on that PCB and if you have something in your mobile, don't you think it will affect the functionality and it will affect the output and the processing time? Of course it will. So it need to have a different kind of protection which is protected under this act. Now let's be um, switching to next act that is plant variety act. So under this act, what it says, the plant breeders rights or the plant variety right we are talking about. So these rights, the, these rights are commercially used by new variety of plants. Okay, these are something, the this plant uh, protection of plant varieties in Farmers Rights Act 2001, it gives protection to plant breeders, to farmers. This further encourage the developments of new varieties of plants and protect the plant varieties. Okay, so the basic thing is, what do you understand basically by a variety that is distinguished from the existing is it should have the characteristics like it should have some few characters like it should be new distinct uniform and stable okay so here we give the protection we get the protection on the field crops we get a protection for 15 years on trees and vines for 18 years and from on notified varieties we get 15 years of protection from the date of notification, but this is under Section 5 of the Seed Act 1966. So, why was there a need for this act, right? Because if you go back to Section 3J of the Patent Act or 3H of the Patent Act, you will come to know that they were not able to protect the plants. So, they were not considering these things new plant varieties under such category like under the category of inventions or which uh, such invention that need to be protected so it was not protected because it falls under the category of 3j or 3h and it was under the section non-patentable inventions so now if they if you have a new variety if a person is working on it and putting his time and effort and money he want to of course get a protection over it otherwise one scientist is going to produce it and n number of people or the farmers they are using it and he is not getting anything out of it why will he work on it right so anything which provide a novel and distinct plant variety and that too, a specific thing is botanical characteristic. In case of patents, we don't have a term like botanical characteristic is not mentioned there. They have novelty, inventive step and industrial applicability. But in this case, we have botanical characteristic, which is different in case of plant varieties. So a plant variety, I was just telling that it should be new, distinct, uniform and stable. So what do you understand by new? New is when if it has not been commercialized for more than one year in a country. Okay. So of course for the experimentation work you are doing, it's fine. But beyond that, you can't commercialize it. And if you have commercialized it for more than a year, it's novel or the new thing is gone. So if you want to get your new variety registered, it should not be commercialized for more than a year. Second thing is it should be distinguished means its botanical characteristics, for example, its height or its maturity or its color, etc. They should be, these are called the botanical characteristics and they should be distinct from the existing variety. Next is uniform. 
they should be distinct but uniform uniform in the sense it should be consistent from plant to plant it should not be like if you have a new variety of flower seeds and if you are growing the if you are uh, growing flowers out of these seeds once you will get a yellow color next time orange next time red next time blue next time green it should not be like that it should be uniform so the next thing is it should be stable stable means it should remain the same from generation to generation or after cycles of reproduction or maybe of the hybrid in case of hybrid varieties as well so these are the things we have under the protection under the umbrella of ipr under plant variety protection act so here we have basically covered different ip sectors in a quick overview now you must have a question in mind if you have some creation if you have some intellectual creation under which umbrella you need to protect it okay you want to have a ipr protection but under what should be a patent or a trademark or copyright or what else okay so let's take an example of a mobile phone it is quite possible that one thing is protected one thing has n number of other applications some some things would be covered under patents some other things under copyright then design then uh, some trade secrets etc etc so here we are talking about a mobile phone so in case of mobile phone in case of patents patents are being protected either for a process or a product so in case of mobile phone we can give it a patent protection over its process or over its protect product for example the technical features of the mobile phone or the way it is communicating or the networking kind of thing okay all these things are protected the process or the product will get a patent next comes to be a trademark so in case of trademark you have anything which looks like a trademark to you like it may be a name of a phone like iphone i by the name iphone you have a picture in your mind right so that is the trade name for this then you can have a domain name or the logo or some distinguished mark design so in design we know that it's it is the new and original design that gets the design protection so in case of new and original design it can be a interface of the phone that may be registered under the design for example you must be knowing the case of uh, or maybe we are discuss we are going to discuss the case of apple versus samsung next thing is copyright protection so copyright protection you can have on the source code or the computer software you are using or the motion pictures or the jingles that are represented of course the semiconductor layout design protection so it will of course have under circuit lay for its circuit layout or the semiconductor design there is one more thing that is trade secret okay what is trade secret so a trade secret is basically a kind of information which has some commercial value you know it has some confidentiality and can be protected from misuse or misappropriation under common law, law or contract so we don't have some separate act for it basically but of course we have trade secrets for example we have trade secret like uh, for a number of things like in case of maggi we have a trade secret upon the maggi masala you know so what is the trade secret they can't leak it out they know that how they are making and only they know how they are making so that is their trade secret and it also gets a ip protection but there is no separate act there is one more thing uh, so what the trade secret is basically so we can say a trade secret is basically a it can be a formula it can be any formula or maybe some practice or the process or even it can be an instrument or a pattern that is being used or it, in case of a phone or something it can be a compilation of information and which is generally not known and it is not like that reasonably ascertain by which uh, it is not known in the uh, it is not easy to reach it at and it is generally not known 
and what it gives you is it gives you reasonably ascertainability to you, by which a business can be obtained an economic advantage over the competitors so it is something which only and only you know neither your competitors know nor your customers know and it is not mentioned in any of the document for example in case of other things you need to publish it but this is not the case here uh, uh, there is one more thing that is trade dress and trade dress is a trade dress is something like a this is a legal term which generally refers to kind of characteristics which are uh, either visual or aesthetic appearance for example it can be visual or aesthetic appearance for some product or its packaging and it can uh, significantly the source of, can be where it can be from the source of the product to consumer for example uh, some of the restaurants you will see that if there is a chain of restaurant you will get a similar type of interiors it is being protected under trade dress next we have another example of a cold drink bottle so it has n number of ip protections for example the way it is packed so the gas doesn't comes out that is patent then it has a trademark trade secret is of course the content inside the bottle it has a design patent over its bottle and the copyright is the way it is being written the coca cola and what else so this is a very uh, uh, between the four things we are going to tell you that how you can look over it and you can decide that you want to file your thing under which ip protection so in uh, who is going to protect the item in case of patent its inventor trademark owner of the goods or services copyright author of the work and design designer or the investor inventor and what is it that need to be protected this we have already discussed but of course in case of patent it's something which is novel inventive and industrially applicable that is need to be protected in case of trademark it can be any name or a word or a slogan or a symbol or a design or any image that identifies a business or a brand in case of copyright it is the creation of the author it can be in the form of a book or the article song photograph sound recordings motion pictures or maybe other creations in case of design it has to be novel or orig novel original and it should be ornamental design of an article okay next comes to registration of course the patent needs a registration trademark it's better if you register it it needs a registration uh, except from the cases like xerox and godrej in copyright registration is not mandatory but of course if you register it it serves as a prima facie and in case of design it needs a registration and registration is not mandatory in the articles if you have manufactured more than 50 articles you need to have a registration over the design because if it's beyond 50 it is not protected any under any other umbrella for example like copyright or something no so the duration of the patent is 20 years from the date of filing trademark is 10 years which can be further renewed copyright that has the longest protection that is for entire life of the author plus 60 years after the death of the author and in case of design it is 10 years further extendable to another 5 years now let's have a quick view over uh, the total number of applications filed under ip in the ipo that is indian patent office in the year 2016 17 so the maximum were of trademark minimum of gi then after trademark there is patents there is copyright there is design and lastly the minimum number were of gi so how many of these filed applications got a grant that was maximum trademark applications 92% patents 4% designs 3% copyright 1% and gi was 0. Point, it was like 0.0001% kind of now let's come to the case studies it will make the things more clear which are regarding number of cases that are existing in the art and which shows that how the people fight over different protections they have and how the different protections are infringing the other protections and so on so 
the very first case we are going to discuss is the latest judgment we got in the case of patents was on Monsanto versus Lucy Voodoo Seeds case. So the if we talk about the brief facts was uh, months, uh, the facts about this case are Monsanto is an American MNC and they introduced one gene called try to be try to AP. And by using this naturally occurring bacterium, that is Bacillus thuringiensis DNA. So what they did was they introduced this in the cotton plant to synthesize a nucleic acid sequence. And this in turn gave a result to a kind of BT cotton kind of thing, which they gave the name, of course. So it gives a result to a cotton plant uh, in which the cotton is, of course, resistant to ball worms. So Monsanto asked patent over two things. The one thing is the identification of gene. And the another thing is the method of inserting nucleic acid sequence into the plant cell. So Monsanto gave the name to this as BT cotton patent. They licensed the patent BT cotton to agribusiness companies in India. And in return, they asked for around like Nuzi we do around rupees 50 lakhs for lifetime along with the recurring trade. So the Indian companies used this patented technology because it was of course resistant to ball worms. But uh, due to government's order, the trade was the trade fee was fixed and the reduced trade fee was refused by Monsanto. So in case when these companies went to CCI, Monsanto terminated the license, extended sub license, and he filed a termination of contract and he filed the arbitration proceedings for rupees 400 crores. So additionally, Monsanto initiated proceedings in Delhi High Court against this company and the other companies seeking an injunction for patent and trademark infringement. So what was the order on it was like the Delhi High Court says in the honorable single judge decision, it was given the decision that they allow Indian companies to use the patent technology and resist uh, reinstated the sub license terminated by Monsanto before. And they held that the trade fee should be fixed by a comment, which will be paid by these companies. It was not accepted for Monsanto and the other companies. So they filed a suit for the division bench. And the division bench said that the suit, it is not patentable under Section 3J of the Patent Act. So what the case is about. And they gave them three months of time to Monsanto to prove the protection under the Plant Variety and Farmers Rights Act 2001. So Monsanto didn't stop there and they went to appeal to Honorable Supreme Court. Now what the Supreme Court's de decision or the judgment was that the decision uh, divisional bench while giving the decision, they said that they have not confined its adjunction to whether the grant of the injunction was satisfied or not as per the facts and the circumstances of the case. So Supreme Court held that before a patent is revoked, a patent is basically revoked under section 64 of the Patent Act 1970. So before the patent is revoked and the CPC require consideration towards the claims and the counterclaims along with the examination of witness and inspection of documents. So the divisional bench should not dispose the case just by relying on the uh, on the documents existing in the public domain. The Supreme Court want them to at least go through all the annexures which were present and they should have some expert examination. They should consider the, some examination, some expert witnesses. They can't rely on just the documents and they have not even, they were not even uh, considering the annexures, the attached annexures or the reports or any expert witness. 
so the honorable supreme court set aside the order of the divisional bench and the suit is remanded and this presented that the suit is remanded to the learned single judge for disposal in accordance with the law in view of the importance of the question involved we accept we expect the parties to cooperate and facilitate the learned single judge in early disposal of the suit so what the case analysis is the monsanto had introduced a gene that is cry to ab by using the naturally occurring bacterium and when it is introduced in a cotton plant cell it was able to synthesize the nucleic acid sequence and the cotton plant variety which was thus formed is resistant of bollworms now the monsanto had claimed the patent license over two things which we did that is the gene that is identification of the gene and secondly the method of inserting the nucleic acid sequence into the plant uh what comes next is the indian companies which were using this patent technology they asked monsanto to reduce the to reduce the trade fee but the monsanto refused because they were not ready to reduce the trade fees so the indian companies stopped paying them revenue and they just went to cci now because of this action of the indian companies monsanto just terminated the sub license and he, they started the arbitration suit in the high court now in case of single judge honorable single judge allowed indian companies to use the technology and reinstate the license and as indian companies to do pay the trade fee they have to pay the trade fee but it should be in accordance with the government next they move on to divisional bench because they were still monsanto was not satisfied so they went to divisional bench and in case of divisional bench order it was it they said that the uh, bt cotton patent is non patentable under section 3j of the patent act so finally they went to supreme court and when they knocked the doors of the supreme court the conclusion was the supreme court set aside the decision of the divisional bench as the divisional bench invalidated the patent without giving monsanto a full fledged trial so it is important when you have a case you need to give a full fledged trial at least you give a chance to both the parties to present their points so they have considered that they monsanto didn't get a chance to present to full fledged chance to present his trial and secondly supreme court remanded the case to the single judge and the supreme court stated that the monsanto's gene technology and methods are patents so now the case is with again with the single judge for the final thing but it is not revoked under uh, the patent act because of the section 3j next let's talk about the another famous case that is apple versus samsung that was a fight a long battle of 7 years in which apple filed a suit against samsung that samsung is infringing the patents and the design patents so they are infringing the patents as well as they have infringed the design patents of the apple so they asked samsung to just discontinue the marketing of these products but samsung was not ready to do this so the apple filed the infringement product patent configuration that was rectangular product shape with four uniformly rounded corners second the front surface of the product dominated by a screen surface with black borders next is the a substantial black borders above and below the screen having roughly equal width next is a metallic surround framing the perimeter of the top surface next a display of a grid of colorful square icons with uniformly rounded corners and the last but not the least was a bottom row of icons a set off from the other icons and that do not change as the other pages of the user interface are viewed so these were the basic points that the apple says that we have patent and we have design protection for these things but uh, samsung is being using it so they had a long fight they were there were arguments from both the sides then in 2014 it was a judgment passed that samsung need to pay dollar 120 million remember the 
amount was dollar one twenty million on the patent that is slight tone law, which is a very common feature these days, of course. But at that time, they were fighting on this thing. Later on, in the year two thousand seventeen. There was again order against the Samsung that Samsung need was asked to pay another dollar five thirty nine million to Apple, another huge amount that is they need to pay dollar five thirty nine million to Apple. So they were not ready. So they again appealed in the year two thousand eighteen. But uh, in the year two thousand eighteen. they got to know oh my god that between our litigation other companies are moving ahead so we should go for a settlement so they finally settled the suit outside the court before it is again litigated the though the terms of the settlement are not disclosed next we see how the design versus copyright goes so if you have something Which you have a question in mind that it, whether it should be protected under the design or it should be protected under the copyright. Let's see another case for this. This is a landmark case of microfibers versus Gilder and Corporation. So the plaintiff is microfibers. So plaintiff had a worldwide business of manufacturing, marketing, selling, and exporting of upholstery fabrics, either directly or through their subsidiaries. so they claim that their work is original and their work is artistic and it is conceptualized and printed over their products so what they consider what plaintiff these microfibers consider but that because whichever country signed the bond convention and the universal copyright convention so according to these two conventions the plaintiff or the microfiber says that they have copyright protection as well over their articles so what they claim they claim that the defendants that is gilder they have been selling and producing the products that were identical to the plaintiff's artistic work however the defense presented the point that the plaintiff's article artistic works are designs and they they said they are not copyright they are designs so they should be protected under the design protection so they should go and register them under the design they should not come us for the copyright so this is not copyright so the arguments from the appellant side was that ki uh, that the opposite uh, defendants the arguments from appellant to the on defendants were the appellants contended that their printings made by them were applied to the articles fell within the meaning of original artistic work so because of this they were asking for the protection under the section 14c of the copyright act they argued that the designs act exclude artistic work okay so they said that they alleged that the respondent had done participated in some unfair trade practices so they want to continue the suit and sue them what were respondents arguments respondent argued it in a way that they contended that appellant had used the designs industrially in india and in abroad and they are beyond 50 so what the decision was made so the delhi high court decision held was the delhi high court removed all the confusion in this case that whether it should be a copyright or a design and they say is that it was held that the copyright protection is given with respect to the original artistic work and not to the modifications the number thing number one thing which is noted is that the copyright protection is for something which is original artistic work it should not be the mod modification it should be original artistic work and the court then held that the interior of the author that the intention was the author was not considered whatever the intention of the author it is not considered uh, in case of uh, declaring the decision so they ruled that there is a lesser copyright protection in case of industrial design okay if it is commercialized if it is industrial there is a less protection for copyright because copyright is basically it is for author okay so it is not like you are commercializing it like 
in if it can fall under the design so the major two points that need to be noted are the uh, which the co um, court held that the original painting was said to be entitled to copyright protection but the design derived therefrom are for the purpose of industrial production production was said to be covered by the limitations placed in the section 15 of the copyright act and the same be protected if it was registered as a design under the design act so there was a original painting from which which got the copyright protection and from which they derived the design and they start implementing to reproduce that design so uh, for that thing they started to use it industrially so the court basically held that the copyright protection can be seeked only and only when the production of the product is less than 50 once the production pro once the production goes beyond 50 the protection of copyright is gone so copyright is only available if the articles are less than 50 if it's beyond 50 the copyright protection is gone so a person or the plaintiff they should have registered their design under the design act so in this case the court further dismissed the appeal to the appellant so now can you understand that something which is used for the commercial purpose and which goes beyond if the production goes beyond 50 you need to take care that it should be protected under the design act it should not be considered that oh it is brought to the paper it is no more in my mind so it has the copyright protection no this is not the case if you have commercialized it and if you have reproduced it and produced more than 50 in quantity next is and the last case is serval products versus dolphin so in this case plaintiff filed two applications seeking permanent injunction restraining the defendant from using the registered design copyright and passing of trade so in the year 2008 plaintiff produced some novel design on the trays and they have they were claiming that they have some unique shape and the configuration for which the certificate was fine okay so they even got it registered so the suit was for permanent injunction and relief against the defendant now the defendant arguments were Basically, what they want was the defendant contended that the design of the plaintiff, that is, of course, uh, Serville, were not original. And they are saying that defendants, sorry, I mean to say, uh, these are the defendant's arguments, uh, not the plaintiff's. So the defendant who are dolphin, they say, they contended that the designs of the plaintiff were not original and they were just copies of the existing material. And the defendant argues that the designs are already existing. So the reproduction, they, are, they quoted this line that the reproduction of such flowers or the floral designs in combination with the unique manner of the presentation of the colors in the background constitutes infringement of the original artistic work, which has to be restrained through a temporary injunction. So uh, what uh, the plaintiff did, they put some stripes in the background and they produces the floral pattern over it. So they claimed that it is their novelty. So the defendant argued that, that just because you have reprinted it, the, you have reprinted the floral design with some change in the background, it can't be novel. So the plaintiff, what plaintiff argued is they contended that the defendant had been using the plaintiff's design and have been reproducing them. So the plaintiff completely relied on the local commission. They sent a local commission to uh, check it out and the local commission got that defendants are producing such products. So based on the local commissioner's report and about the products, they found that it is infringing. So in case of Delhi High Court, it was they gave a decision that the court held that the contention made by the defendant were reasonable okay by the defendants do consider this the court held 
uh, gave the decision in favor of defendants who said that just having a background change like they have produced the stripes in the background and then they printed some floral pattern so it can't get a protection so in favor of that the court said that the contention made by the defendant were reasonable and the designed registration of the plaintiff is liable to be challenged so in that case the court vacated the interim order of the defendant another thing is what the court did was they have vacated they have also vacated the injunction with respect to the artistic work as registered by the plaintiff and the court also vacated the injunction with respect to the design so in this case both the cases are gone the, the injunction was removed for the artistic work as registered by the plaintiff and on the design so the defendant was allowed to further produce or sell all the products which were there before and not permitted so that's it for the presentation let's quickly go through some questions so i'm just going to read out the questions from the inbox and we'll try to take as many questions as possible so if you have any questions you can write to me and i can answer them later on as well and the mail id is provided in the description part so looking at the time constraint i think we should take up the questions later on and we can answer the questions right now i can't see any questions here so that's it for the day i hope the session is useful to you and we do assist people and we do tell, want you to protect your inventions your intellectual creations your ideas your designs your artistic work should be created under the ipr umbrella and you should be able to commercialize it we do help in commercializing in licensing in helping uh, we do help in setting up the ipr cells so we are there to help you out in whatever you need in case of ipr so that's it for the day you can get us back any time you can write to us and you can call us and you can talk to us as well thank you so much thanks for the day all the very best thank you